evening, everyone. Tonight we'll catch some highlights from Mackey this week, and we'll also get the results from the Big Ten Indoor Track and Field Championships. But first, I'm sure all you baseball fans have spring fever right about now, so we sent Fast Track's Eric Markham out to get the scoop on Purdue's baseball team. The Boilers lost a few key players from last year, but staff ace Matt Bischoff is pleased with his new projected closer, Kevin Cahill. Uh, Kevin's a great pitcher, you know. Uh, this is my third year with him. We came in together. Uh, he's really developed a lot of his pitches. Um, I think he's going to just step in. Last year, the Boilermakers took second place in the Big Ten after a poor 2-11 start. This year, they'll, it'll be the bullpen that will be the main concern for Coach Doug Schreiber. Namely, he lost his closer, Josh Lindblom, to the second round of the Major League Baseball draft to the Los Angeles Dodger farm system. But they will be returning most of their starting pitchers, like staff ace Matt Bischoff. Offensively, they will be returning 77% of their hits and RBIs and 71% of their home runs. So needless to say, their goals are going to be set a little bit higher than last year when they barely missed the NCAA tournament. Well, that's always a goal um, to get to the postseason, and postseason mean the NCAA regional. With six games in the books, Coach Schreiber is disappointed with their two and four start. Um, right now, it's just to get back playing good baseball uh, in all phases. I mean, we've dominated, you know, parts of games. Uh, we just haven't been able to complete, you know, a, a full nine inning game. So, you know, starting pitching wise, um, relief pitching wise, and then obviously our uh, our offense has got to click a little bit better. They will have another chance this weekend in a three-game series against the Texas State Bobcats at San Marcos, Texas. They'll look to improve upon their 12-21 and 21 road record from last year, with their first 18 games being played on the road. Big Ten tournament seedings were up for grabs in the women's basketball team's final two games of the season. Now, the highlights. This past week, Purdue apparently was going for the Michigan State Championship with games with both Michigan and Michigan State. And there's Lindsay Wisdom Hilton becoming Purdue's all-time career leader in rebounds with a game ball. And Michigan right here is going to try to stay out of the basement of the Big Ten standings, but Wisdom Hilton makes it difficult with a block shot. Then Brittany Rayburn will finish with a three at the other end. On senior night, Danielle Campbell hit two of her 18, and in total, seniors Wisdom Hilton, Freeman, Campbell, Bogdanova, and Miotin scored 44 of the team's 70 points and the route over Michigan. Next, they would travel to Michigan State and East Lansing for a battle of the two seed in the Big Ten tournament. And then early on, a little bit of sloppy play from the Boilers, but they would get back on track, I promise, as Fakara Malone starts a three-on-one break right here, and they're going to finish it off with a layup by Freeman, who had 20 points. Then Wisdom Hilton will challenge the tallest player in the NCAA and get the best of her this time. And you're going to see more Freeman. Nice take to the basket right here, but Michigan State's Kalisha Keen says not so fast. She gets found in the corner for a clutch three-pointer to bring the Spartans within one. Later on, Rayburn will hit a clutch free throw of her own to tie it, but the Spartans still have a chance. Lauren H. with a give-and-go play with Kendra Johnson, and then here's the game-winning shot. Are you kidding me? Michigan State beats the Boilers 57-55 to in the final 1.8 seconds to take the number two seed in the Big Ten tournament. So they got the three seed. Well, at least they got the first round buy-in in the Big Ten tourney. Yeah, actually their first game is going to be on March 6th in Indianapolis, Indiana versus the, the winner of the Michigan-Indiana game. Great. Well, I'll be watching for that. Now let's see how the men's team fared in its last two home games. First of those games came against Ohio State Buckeyes, and good thing Chris Kramer's extra special fan made it to the game so he could see this. He's going to clean up a Hummel miss, and then B.J. Mullen's going to try some ole defense, and that's not going to work, but Hummel had a great game again as he sort of dunks it right there and gets mauled for two of his 17. I guess no foul there. I guess we're playing pickup game rules. Anyway, Lewis Jackson wants in on the action as well with a quick two, and P.J. Hill of Ohio State would try to keep face with three of his seven, but Purdue would pull away with the help of Nemanja Kalisan, who would go crazy in the second half when he made all 13 of his points and another three right there. Purdue went on to win the game 50-75 to in the largest margin of victory of the year. Finally, they took on Northwestern for the last game in a Mac Arena this season, and it was senior night as Marcus Green, Bobby Riddell, Nemanja Kalisan, and Chris Reed were all honored at the start, but early on we're going to see a lot of sophomore Jawan Johnson on the offensive end right there cleaning up, and then on the defensive end as well as he stifles any chance of this ball getting into his lane, but we've seen how gritty Northwestern can play on the road, and Craig Moore hits, and Kevin Comel fakes everyone out and hits as well. And this is Etwan Moore's attempt at keeping the bowlers in the game, but Michael Thompson of Northwestern is just straight up 
tired of playing basketball tonight. He had some free throws down the stretch, and that's something Purdue was not able to do. And Matt Painter is going to go ahead and shake hands, but the final score at the end was 64-61 in favor of the Northwestern Wildcats. Now let's take a look at what's going on in other Boilermaker sports. The Purdue men's tennis team conquered Ball State on Sunday with a 5-2 win on opponent territory in Muncie, Indiana. The women's team also won the doubles match for the sixth time this season. This gives the Boilermakers the all-time series lead after its third straight win over the Ball State Cardinals, which dates all the way back to 1939. At the Big Ten Indoor Track and Field Championships, the Purdue women's team finished in 8th place with 38 and a half points. Junior Inkiro Aguaba had an outstanding performance throughout the competition and finished by breaking a 21-year-old record at Purdue in the triple jump at 12.9 meter mark. The Purdue men's golf team concluded the 2009 Puerto Rico Classic taking 14th place. Purdue hosted the tournament in Rio Grande, Puerto Rico on the Par 72 River Course. The Boilermakers will return to action at the Linger Longer Invitation in Georgia on March 20th. Now it's time for your national weather forecast. Good day everyone. We're going to start off by taking a look at our national weather forecast. Generally temperatures this weekend look pretty warm for this time of year. The cool spot up north around Minneapolis coming in at a high of only 40 degrees on Saturday. Kansas City coming in at a high of 61. Philadelphia 60, Atlanta 76, and down south towards Houston, the warm spot at almost 80 degrees. Taking a look at Sunday, looks like the same story. Showers keeping temperatures relatively warm across the eastern half of the country. St. Louis coming in at 65, New York coming in at 60, and New Orleans coming in at 80 degrees. If you're traveling anywhere close by in the Midwest, temperatures look, again, pretty warm. 60s in Indy. 50 in Chicago, Evansville looks to be in the 60s, and across the board looks like showers expected both Saturday and Sunday here in the Midwest. And also, daylight savings time starts March 8th, that is Sunday, so be sure to set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed. That's it for the National Weather Forecast, I'll send it back to the studio. After our break, we'll have Brian Wolf's weather notes. And we'll look at Saturday's performance by Gary Allen. Stay with us. Tired of the same old packaged meals in your dorm or apartment? Then make sure that you check out Wiley's Dining Court, the latest addition to Purdue's dining halls. Wiley offers a wide selection of meals that you can customize, including make your own pastas, pizzas, deli, and salads. Specific to Wiley is the Churrascadia Brazilian Steakhouse, where they have a unique way of serving food. You can fuel up for a day of classes, grab some lunch, or unwind with friends at Wiley any day of the week. Make sure you get your next meal at Wiley. 